welcome to another episode of Diecast Restos. It's Jason here. Today I'll be working on the 37B Carrier Bantam 2 ton Coca Cola truck. This model was in the range from 1961 until 1965. Now you can see this one has been repainted in its lifetime. The original Coca Cola transfers remain underneath the red paint. And you can see as I twist and turn it in the light, you can see the original stickers there. So it looks like it's had a coating of uh, obviously this red paint over the back and also some yellow paint. The base uh, latches in on the back and also on the front here as well. So no drilling required today, thankfully. The repainting work on this um, seemed to have spread across to the wheels. There's a bit of a bleed going on with that yellow paint and in particular the red paint, you can see it across the top of the bottles on the back of the vehicle. But most of the chrome work is still here. I assume this has been repainted back in at some point. But we'll do it justice and uh, give it a good going over today. First of all, I just wanted to see to the rear latch which had been pushed out of shape slightly so I tapped it in with a flat headed screwdriver and just with my hammer as well and then just using my dental tool I can quite easily remove the base. Being one of the earlier models there's not too many components to deal with here. Next I'll just remove the axles using my needle nose pliers. And here are all the components. And in they'll go for a paint strip. And I can brush it on all over to try and remove that dodgy paintwork. The Carrier Bantam, which this model was based on, is probably an F-Series, which is a two to three ton commercial vehicle produced in real life from 1948 until 1963. Um, here you can see the initial layer of paint has been removed. However, it doesn't seem to have removed the original layer of paint after about an hour or so of leaving it. So I come back after leaving it overnight and the paint has uh, completely stripped away. So I just need to be patient and uh, leave it slightly longer than usual. But I didn't revert to using caustic soda for this uh, particular model. And once I've gone over it with a wire brush, a copper wire brush, to remove all the flecks of paint, I also use some dental tools to remove the residual parts. But you can still see here there's a little bit left over, so I need to just go in with a fine tooth comb and pick out those little specks of paint which are left, particularly the red paint from the, uh, from the banners at the top. But the detail is back and visible again in the front. And the base is cleared up quite nicely as well. Just need to remove the specks of paint from in between the lettering. Next, I'll move on to using my battery drill and rubbing the axles against some sandpaper just to remove that surface rust. You can see a little patch of that there. Using the trusty Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, I give the base a good coating. And then I can move on to the bodywork. Lots of nooks and crannies with this model, which needed attention. So I had to be very thorough while applying. And here you can see the model starting to take shape once again. Nice fine detail on the, the on the grill, on the individual bottles. Thanks to the glorious British weather, I reverted to my garage to paint these models using the Tamiya TS47 Chrome Yellow. Same as I'd use for the evening news van. The original models look very much alike and this paint did that model justice, I feel. So I'll use it once again. Ensuring I coat the inside as well as that is on display, there's no interior for this model. And after the first coat, it's a little patchy in places, but I think it's come out quite well. 
there's very limited access to hold onto the model with any kind of forceps. So on one side of the model, I held the forceps in place for the first coat and then the second coat, I moved them over to the opposite side. Here you can just see I missed a small area just inside the cabin there. And then a quick going over with some black Tamiya paint. Just to coat the base again. I don't usually include this in my videos because it's not particularly interesting. So next I'll just give the wheels a clean up while the bodywork is drying. Just a bit of hot soapy water to remove all of the dirt and any of the loose paint. And then I can use some brake fluid on the wheels themselves to remove the remaining paint. It's starting to look like I'd actually used that cotton bud for its intended purpose. Um, then I can just scrape off the paint with a sharp dental tool. Once all that's done, I can tap the wheels back onto the base just using a hammer against my vise. Next, I paint the chrome hubs on the end of the axles. Here I just decided to touch up some of the base with um, some Tamiya X1 Black. Uh, this is just because where I tapped it in uh, on the vise, um, I tapped it against some exposed metal, so some of it had flaked off a little. Now I'll start applying the transfers. Here you can see there's two for the banners on either side and then one large decal for the rear. First I just cut them up into individual transfers and then cut them down to size. Just using a cotton bud, I'll dab on some patches of uh, water just so I can readjust if needs be and it helps the application process tremendously. I often find I just use my fingers and then I can sort of push it into place. These ones are quite fiddly. Once it's in position, you can just squeeze out the excess water underneath and begin to dry it with the opposite end and just do the same for the rear as well. Once they're all on, I can use some of the Tamiya TS13 clear coat just to lock those transfers in place and apply a nice shine to it. That will prevent them from cracking, uh, flaking away, fading in future. And with that satisfying click, the base is back in place. And I will paint in the details next. But I'll save that for the grand reveal. So here you can see what we began with. Fairly drab recreation. I'm not really sure why it had been repainted because it doesn't look like it was in particularly bad condition to begin with. And strangely covering up the old Coca-Cola transfers. And then leaving the paint to bleed a bit along the edges. I can only imagine that's the original chrome work on the front. But I decided this one definitely needed a redoing. So here is what we finished off with. New chrome on the front, just to highlight the bumper, grille, the headlights and the badge. And the ends of the axles of course. Um, gone is that horrible bleeding paint and new transfers in place. Just to give it a nice new fresh look. I quite enjoy doing these early series models without the interiors. They're just a quick go to restoration when you may be a bit short on time, but I really enjoy the uh, the outcomes. Interestingly, the difference between this and the 37A, um, other than a slight difference in size, is the fact that the bottles are staggered on the original casting, whereas they're in straight lines for this one. Now that's that for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again for the next one. Please like and subscribe, and bye for now.